What's a prime number? One way you might define the prime numbers is you could say they're any number that can be factored only as one and itself. So for example, three is prime because the only factors it has are one and three, but four would not be prime because we could either write it as one times four or as two times two. But there are two problems with this definition. First of all, when I was a kid, it was immediately like, well, then is one a prime number? Because one can only be written as one times itself. It's just that it happens to be one itself. And then the other problem is, where does this leave negative numbers? Negative one can only be written as negative one times itself, so would negative one count as a prime number? To fix these two problems, we have to go back to what are prime numbers even for? We think about prime numbers as a set at all because what mathematicians want is a set of numbers that you can use to uniquely factor any other positive integers. We often accomplish this factorization with something called a prime factor tree. So consider something like 30. 30 can be written as 2 times 15, 5 times 6, 3 times 10, or of course 1 times 30 itself. But if we write it down as something like 5 times 6, the prime numbers are where we stop the branches. So this branch of 5 is done, but then we can go on because 6 can be written as 2 times 3. Both 2 and 3 are also prime, and so there it is. The only way to factor 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. If we allowed 1 to count as a prime number, none of these branches could ever end. Because we could always say, oh, well, this branch that stops at 3, actually, I want that to go on to 1 times 3. And then this 3 again, I want to go on to 1 times 3, and so on and so on for as long as you want to be annoying. Coming back up to our original factorization, essentially what we're saying is you can add on any power of 1 one you want, and of course that's not going to change the actual product, but it does change what the factoring looks like. And we don't like that, so we don't let one be a prime number. Similarly, if you let negative one get involved, things can get kind of weird. Three, for example, we might write as negative three times negative one. Then that negative three, we could write down again as negative one times positive three. And we can keep doing this for as long as we, again, want to be annoying. In this case, it's not true that just any power of negative one will do, but it is true that any even power of negative one will do. For the purposes of being maximally useful, my favorite definition for the prime numbers are any positive integers that have exactly two distinct factors. That excludes things like one, which have only one distinct factor. It excludes, of course, zero and any negative numbers because they're not positive, and it gives us back what we want the prime numbers for, these unique factorizations of every number after basically positive one. Every integer greater than one is either going to fall into that set of prime numbers or will be uniquely factorable as the product of the prime numbers. So there you have it. That's